Millsurf Garage. We're here again with uh, the snap caps. We're going to play with these a little bit. I had a couple of questions. There was a little bit of feedback. Some people are asking some stuff, and I like this. This is cool. A couple of people sent me messages that were like, what do we do with these things? And a couple of other people sent me messages that were like, why, when you talk about the snap caps, do you say they have to be so bulletproof? Why are the bullets loosening up? What's actually going on with these things? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you the answer to both of those questions right here. We're going to take our trusty, rusty 1942, 1911. We're going to make sure it's empty. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to load it up with some snap caps here. Uh, let's do five three four and look at that we have empty cases so what we do is well let's just go let's just go with a full mag here all right so this is what you could do you could do drills like this with your buddies or you could just set them up yourself you take some empty cases right now the idea here is we load the mag and the whole idea is look whether you use your guns like for self-defense you carry with these or, um, you know, there are some people that, you know, they just they just lock their stuff up and they don't even, you know, they wouldn't even reach for it in a self-defense situation even in their home. I've I've known some people like that where they're just like, no, I don't want to use them for that. I, don't, I, don't, I would never shoot anybody, you know. And then there's, uh, there's people that are just moderate that are like, look, I don't carry it or anything like that. But I, if, if I'm at home, you know, and then they don't even keep guns loaded and stuff at home. They're just like, well, if I have an opportunity, I would, I guess I would load one up and use it if I really had to. And then there's other people that have, like, you know, guns magnetically underneath tables and, like, and you press, like, the deer antler on the wall and, like, an AK-47 falls out of the ceiling. You know, there's people that are so ready. But whatever stage you're up to, if you're into firearms, doesn't make this any less fun to just play around like this. So, you see... I mean, you can play with guns. They say that playing with guns is bad. If you're doing something unsafe, it's bad. But, I mean, these are our toys, are they not? This is the safe space. Are we not in the nest? The safe nest? So here's what we do. We take a brass. We drop it in the chamber, okay? We chamber it. We load up the mag. And now we just kind of... We block the ejection of that, and we just make like a... Look, that's a simple stovepipe. You can leave that for your buddy. You can, you can start off with this one, right? See, but look what's going on down there. You see, there's kind of like a half ass feed going on there. You're not really sure what's going to happen if you pick this one up. But this is a good one, right? So you clear everything away, and you're just like... You don't have to time anything. You just Your job is to clear it, get it into battery, get it ready to shoot. Do you have to tap rack? Do you have to drop the mag? Can you just do it just by cycling the action and you just disfamiliarize yourself with your firearm? You know what I mean? So let's go. Oh, now see, let's see what happened there. We're having a serious problem. Can we get that out? We can get that out. We still have a double feed. Have to drop the mag. Oh, we're in battery. That's it. We're done. Boom, boom. We're observing everything that's going on there. And trust me, messing around with live rounds doing drills like this, someone's going to die. Trust me. So that's why these are really cool. You saw what happened there, right? So now uh, let's get rid of that. Let's uh, let's feed another case. There we are. And uh, let's do it again. Kind of like the same looking one, right? That's a good one. It's like your typical stove pipe. However. You got like a half ass. It's not like the slide just closed on it. It started to feed around and closed on it. You know what I mean? You see that? So it makes it a little bit more weird. Ready? Let's try this one again. Oh, see the mag got to come out on that one. Done. It's always good to clear whatever you got in there because, you know, you're never really sure when you're doing that fast if you close the action on the spent case. You know what I mean? So it's always good to rack one more round through just to make sure in a case like that, that you're, that you're set. Now, a lot of people would say, you know, the second you have a malfunction that, uh, that acts like this, you should immediately drop the mag. And I'm going to show you, 
you can do some interesting uh you could do some interesting drills like this you can change the case now watch this one you kind of you leave the mag a little loose you see that and then you kind of you kind of do that you leave it like that for your buddy maybe even then you kind of tighten that up a little bit so maybe he doesn't see that you know and you just go okay we're ready now what he's gonna do is he's he's not even gonna be able to chamber around no matter what right this is why you have to be able to you have to see and we're chewing these up you're starting to understand now why these need to be so good because if these aren't good when they're getting caught and they're getting stuck you're going to be pushing the bullet into the case the cases the bullets are going to be loosening up and falling out i mean as it is yeah you chew them up a little bit you definitely you're doing things like this you're going to scrape you're going to scratch them up but i've been doing these for months now with these 45s messing around with this um from time to time and look at them they're they're none worse for wear they're they're still they're still in the game and then these of course when these these have this uh thin edge here they're gonna start getting chewed up so be it so then we toss those you know what i mean as long as but this is why the snap caps need to be solid to uh you know to be able to handle this type of uh this type of activity here but this is what makes it fun let's do a cool one let's put that in there and then dump this on top of the mag close the mag and then let let the, well let's leave it like that let's leave it like that with the with the the the, the uh, slide lock off right so it's just like look at that one that's an interesting one now if i get this and i say go right away i'm seeing that i have a primer struck case right there so and, and there's no extractor on it and i know i'm not gonna i know that that's not going to be able to cycle so immediately I know I got a mag drop. Then when you get into the mag drops, right? The mag, see how I can't just press the button and have this mag drop right now. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not in that state. This is why you have to make mags. You know, I uh I used to have a job where I carried a Glock and they wouldn't let you. I thought I was all cool that I found a plug that goes in here that actually had a single round a single round went in here like a backup round went in, in this plug so that if you if you if the mag was out and the gun was unloaded and it was just laying there you would still be able to pick it up it would be seemingly unloaded but you'd be able to pop that tab off the back take that single round out chamber it and you'd have at least one round to go in a gun that like your adversary might have thought was inert I thought that was cool I thought that was tactically cool until I realized that this is here for a reason and you need to be able to get your thumb behind this when you can't get the mag out. But it didn't take long of messing around with tactical drills to realize that. That See, in a case like this, they could just make the magazine square, but they have this piece is here for a reason. And it's small, but it's enough where you could really get your finger under it because you're going to need to pull that out. So, and you're also going to need to be able to have magazine control while you manipulate the slide. So you're going to have to work on coming out and being able to come over here, operate the slide, clear the gun, even get rid of that round. Back in, cycle, and you're done. I can go on and on. I mean, this isn't really necessarily like, say, it's just a tactical, a tactical, uh, uh, um, um, what do you call it, uh, failure to feed drill video necessarily as it is for knowing that when you have a handful of stuff like this these are your tools to be able to get this kind of stuff done and it's not just semi-autos either you have revolvers you have a 357 here you could practice um with these in your pouch and uh you fire you you could simulate um firing dumping these out and reloading combat reloading these things which is always fun with the uh 
the revolvers that are, that don't have the you see how when you don't have the proper grips this just shows you how you'd never know that this would not be a cool thing to do um to have these what an abomination these things don't even work right away i just learned something right now is that this doesn't work these things are useless with these grips and then you wind up scrape if you ever wonder how these marks get on the grips here that's exactly how that happens but um you could use these with 44s also here's the 44s and the speed loader they work they fit inside speed loaders but at least it'll show you it'll show you how i don't even want to scrape up my uh, model 29 i mean these things fit but then when you turn it and you go to release it's stuck here there's a recess here but it's really just for loading you have to have special grips on here to be able to uh the scant grips to be able to really use these speed loaders but uh as far as these rounds fitting in and acting like real rounds inside of a speed loader they sure do so that's the story you're really just you're really just doing drills if you had uh if you had a revolver where these speed loaders would be able to fit in. Tell me that's not cool. I mean, they they release like a, you know, just like the regular rounds would. So that's the, that's the story. There's the answer to the two questions. Why do they need to be strong? Because they're coming in and out of speed loaders and you're pulling them in and out of revolvers over and over and over again. These stay pretty good. But then... Then the semi-auto ones, you know, you, you beat the crap out of these things doing uh, doing misfire drills. You know, you could you could set up your own double feeds. You don't need the... Uh... There you go. You could leave that to your buddy. You don't even need to have empty cases. That ain't working. Pull the mag out. I would get rid of that one. Rechamber. Boom. Done. What else could you do? How about drop the mag out a little bit, put him on top, Let's put him on top here, drop the mag down, then raise up the mag. Ooh, that's a good one. Look at that one. And another reason to use snap caps for any of this kind of stuff like this. You see how that's catching? See how that's hitting right there on the edge? How? How much of a reach would it be to think that that edge could hit right on that primer if you're using live rounds? Even if you're very, very careful. Even if you're doing this at the range, pointed down range. Is it worth it to have, to be messing around with these feed drills? These failure to feed drills or malfunction drills and have a round blow up uh, right next to your hand or in your face? Because the edge of the slide caught the primer. I think inertness is the best way to go. Let's see, how do we do this one? Ready, go. Oh, oh, it did a complete 180 in there. Look at that. Drop it out, back in. Chamber. We're done. All right, everybody. See you soon. Getting those Berettas warmed up. Trust me. I was going to get this Beretta book to go along with everything, but the book is like 200 something dollars. It ain't happening. We're just pulling out. Uh, we're just going to go with iron. And no paper. And we're just, we're just going to run through these Berettas. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, by the way, all of that. I'm not even talking about my uh, my place. See? Not the most important thing in my mind to promote these things. It's more uh, important to uh, feature how awesome they are. But it's realisticsnapcaps.com. The... Checkout code is Milsharp Garage, one word, M I L S U R P G A R A G E. That gets you 10% off. Uh, 10 of these is 20 bucks, that I know. So that would be 18 bucks. There's no shipping. I mean, how could you go wrong? For 18 bucks, you got 10 of these 45 snap caps, and you and your friends are doing malfunction drills. That's what I'm talking about. I'll see you all later. And um, have a good weekend.